Okay, on this video, we're going to talk about heart rates and training zones. Now, I referred to this in other videos. We, we talked a little bit about heart rates and, and training zones, but I didn't get real specific. So I want to make sure you fully understand this. This is important for aerobic training. It's also important for anaerobic training. And it's a measure of intensity, how hard you're working. So let me write that down in here. So just like in weight training, intensity would be measured by how much weight you're lifting. In a an aerobic class, intensity is often determined by heart rate. So let's move down here. So just like in a weight training class where you would find your one rep max, how much weight you can lift one time for a given exercise. For an aerobic class, we want to find out our highest possible heart rate. So 220 minus your age is going to give you an estimate. So I'll write that right here. An estimate of your max heart rate. And this is extremely important because this is the only, well, not the only way, but it's, it's one of the best ways to measure how hard you're working or to measure intensity for an aerobic class. That's the reason for my classes I like my students to wear heart rate monitors because it tells us a lot about how hard we're working. It tells us if we're training too hard or, or not hard enough. But to know if you're training hard enough, you need to determine your training zones, your upper limit and lower limit. First, let me show you how to find your estimated max. So I like to use a 20-year-old example. So if you were 20, so I'm just replacing this age with your actual age. So if you were 20, your estimated max would be 200. So this is an estimate. You possibly, possibly could have a higher heart rate than that. If you've got good genetics or maybe you've done a lot of aerobic training throughout your life, your max, your actual max heart rate may be much higher than this, but it is an estimate, so this is good for most people. So let's take, we want to find our upper limit, so I'm going to set that at 80%, and we're going to also want to find our lower limit. So I'm going to set that at 70%. So we're training at 80% of our estimated max. So this is our estimated max here. So we're going to train at 80% of that. And same thing here, we're going to train at 70% of our estimated max. So let's take 200 times 0 0.80. That's just 80%. So that's representing 80% here. It's going to be 160. Down here, we'll do the same thing. 200 times 0 0.70. So that's 70% equals 140. So now we have our upper and lower limit. And if we had a heart rate monitor, we could go in and tell. You could manually do this, but if, if your heart is beating 160 beats uh, per minute, it's going to be really hard to do a manual test. So that's the reason I like heart rate monitors. So this is my upper limit. This is my lower limit. And we want to train in between these. So if I had my heart rate monitor on, I would want to train right in between those. So let me give you a good example. Let's say we're working out, we're in my cardio kickboxing class, and we look down and my heart rate is 150. Oh, that's great. That means the aerobic system can supply enough energy to keep me going for a long period of time, and I'm not training too hard. But if I look down, and I'm right in the middle of the toughest part of the workout, and uh, my heart rate is 120, I'm not working hard enough. I'm not giving enough effort. So I'm not getting a lot of cardiorespiratory benefit. It's not saying I'm, I'm not getting benefit from it. I am, but I'm not getting the most benefit I could out of this exercise. So I'm not gonna improve my cardiorespiratory endurance as much as I could if I could get up here in my training zone. If I look up or look down at my heart rate monitor and it says 180, and I'm going to have to maintain this for a long time, I'm training way too hard. I'm going to have to slow down a little bit if I, if I want to keep going because what's eventually going to happen is 
the anaerobic system is going to have to kick in to help supply enough energy to keep me up going and I'm eventually going to fatigue because anytime the anaerobic system kicks in if I stay there long enough lactic acid is going to accumulate so that's what I want to talk about next if you've seen my video series over lactate threshold anaerobic threshold or anaerobic training I talk a little bit about lactate threshold and anaerobic threshold and just in case you haven't seen it I want to give you a brief introduction to it so that way you can link this to heart rate you can link that video to heart rate so let's say 165 is my anaerobic threshold let's say I work out here and I'm at 160 and I know that's my upper limit of my training zone but as long as I don't go above that the aerobic system let me write that down here aerobic system can supply enough energy to keep me going so there's no fear of lactic acid accumulating because the aerobic system is supplying the energy that I need so I can keep going for a long period of time and change colors but let's say I get up here and I start training at 175 and this is my anaerobic threshold here so I'm just gonna write threshold Oops, move over. Anaerobic threshold there. So there it is, and I'm training above it. There's going to be this point at which onset of blood lactate accumulation happens. It means that lactic acid in blood gets too high, and the lactic acid is just building up so that the muscles are eventually going to fatigue. So that's onset of blood lactate accumulation. So if I drop back down before that happens or right when it happens, I won't have to stop. I can keep going for a long period of time. Because if I stay up there and it, and it continues to build up in the blood, I'm going to have to stop because too much lactic acid is going to build up and I'm going to fatigue. So that's essentially what anaerobic threshold is. It's that point at which the anaerobic system has to kick in to help out the aerobic system because the intensity is too high and more specifically it's that point at which the onset of blood lactate accumulation happens where I'm eventually going to have to stop and so you'll also hear of lactate threshold which is essentially synonymous with anaerobic threshold it's just there are two different ways of measuring when this onset of blood lactate accumulation happens. This one is with a blood test and this one is using a metabolic cart looking at VCO2 and the rate of intake of oxygen relative to the intake of VCO2 and I don't want to get any more complicated than that but that gives you the basic idea of what anaerobic threshold is that's normally these two are normally measured in percent of VO2 max and we'll talk about that in a later video what VO2 max is and why you um, if you can train at a certain percentage without the onset of blood lactate accumulation um, the greater the percentage of VO2 max you can train at before the onset of blood lactate accumulation happens the better you'll do in endurance events so I hope that it explains why setting your upper limit and lower limit is so important because if you're training about 80 percent you're going to be below your anaerobic threshold most likely for most people so you're not training too hard and you'll make sure that if you know your training zone that you're training hard enough so this one's I'm training hard enough if I'm above that one and I'm not training too hard if I'm below my upper limit Let's go up here real quick. I want to explain something. This is a nice chart. I love this chart because essentially it shows you exactly what I was just talking about. So here's your age. So right here it says age. Here's a 20 year old person. Here's their estimated max right there. So just like we went in and did the math, a 20 year old person should have an estimated max of 200. And that you'd be training at 100%. You're not going to last very long. So 180 would be 90% for a 20 year old person. 
160 was, there's that upper limit that we set, and here's that lower limit. So you notice that kept us in these zones. And you'll see these a lot of times on treadmills and other, um, other aerobic machines where it'll set your different training zones. So VO2 max, I'm at VO2 max here. I'm not going to last very long. On this one, it's becoming anaerobic. It's hardcore training. I'm not going to last very long. Anything above 80%. That's the reason I said that was going to be my upper limit. Here, in between 60 and 40, is my aerobic zone. So I'm going to improve my cardiorespiratory endurance. So that's optimal for improving our cardiorespiratory endurance. And so that's exactly what we set it at. We set it at 80% and 70%. Now, if you set it to 60%, that's a wider range, you're still getting some decent benefit out of it. So it's good for weight control. This is good for a general fitness routine. So a lot of my classes where I set them in general fitness groups, I let them set their upper and lower limit at 80 to 60%. But you can see that's not that hard. 120 is a brisk walk for some individuals that haven't been training very long. So this is a great chart to look to use. Notice here my estimated max for a 25 year old person is 195 and you see as you age your estimated max starts to decline and you can slow that decline by doing aerobic training so keeping your cardiorespiratory endurance up strengthening your heart making your lungs run efficiently you can slow this decline as you age if you'll continue to do aerobic training so I hope this video was useful. I hope it explained to you how to set your upper and lower limits and why it's important. So I will see you in the next video.